Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about indifference curves in the Edgeworth box. Okay, so to get started, we need to think about feasible allocations and bundles in the Edgeworth box. Remember, in our story, we have two people. We have Ayanda and we have Biko. So when we think about them, they like two goods. Um, there are kilograms of coffee and gigabytes of data. So X bar and Y bar are the total amounts of those two goods respectively. Okay. Now, X superscript A and Y superscript A represent the quantities of goods in Ayanda's bundle. Similarly, X superscript B and Y superscript B represent the quantities in Biko's bundle. Now, I'm just going to refer to those as XA and YA and XB and YB and drop the name superscript, but you know what I'm saying when I do that. Okay, so we say that an allocation is feasible, it's possible, if the amount of coffee and data it gives to the two people, Ayanda and Biko, is no greater than the amount available. So with the two goods, X and Y, what that means is that the sum that each person has, XA for Ayanda plus XB for Biko, the two of those things added together has to be less than or equal to the total amount of X available, which is X bar. Similarly, for Y, YA plus YB must be less than or equal to Y bar. Let's take a quick change there. We're going to see there that that should be Y superscript A plus Y superscript B is less than or equal to Y bar. Okay, the Edgeworth box only shows bundles that fully exhaust the total supply. Um, so that um, the first rule that we spoke about in the chapter, that nothing gets thrown away, is observed. Okay. So, here we have an Edgeworth box. I'm just going to move my head out the way so you can see what I'm talking about here. Now, in this Edgeworth box, what do we see? We have a total amount of x. Um, we have well, x, a, going along the horizontal axis from um, left to right. That's how much of a um, Ayanda has. Then going um, from south to north up, that's how much um, of a um, of y that Ayanda has. And then going down from top to bottom, that's how much of um, uh, y Biko has. And then going from right to left, that's how much um, of the, B good, the x good that Biko has. We then have one allocation here, z, which, um, or z, which says how much each person has. So what can we see there? We can see at point z that um, Ayanda has nine units of the x good, and one unit of the y good. We've got one up and then nine along. Then similarly, what do we see for Biko? Biko has um, 14 of the y good and only one of the x good. Now, what can we see there as well? The total amounts that they both have, nine plus one for x, that equals x bar. So nine plus one equals 10 units. There are 10 units of x in this little economy. Similarly, there are 14 units plus 1 units, 15 units total of good Y. So, what's a reminder here? Every point in the box is an allocation that uses up all of the goods. They have to sum to all of the possible allocation, or to all of the possible um, numbers that they could get. So, X bar and Y bar, they're exhausted at any point in the box. Now, who gets what at point Z? We've just discussed that. We said that Ayanda gets nine um, units of coffee and one unit of data, and Biko gets 14 units of data and one unit of coffee. Okay, now when we think about this, when we think about the, th the preferences that they have as individuals, what can we see as well? We can see that if Ayanda likes both of these things, she likes coffee and she likes data, then we have an arrow going upwards that suggests what is better for Ayanda. So um, what we see there when we think about this, we're trying to think about what's better for Ayanda. Ayanda likes to get more of both goods. What's more for Ayanda going up to the northeast. Up to the northeast is better for Ayanda. Now for Biko, he gets more of um, the X good as we go along um, from right to left and he, he gets more of the Y good as we go from top to bottom. So it's better for Biko, he gets more of both goods as we go from the northeast down to the southwest of um, the box. So if we're looking at his arrow, um, from the northeast down to the southwest, we can see him doing better. That is better for Biko in terms of what he prefers.
So what we see here is that there are conflicts of interest between the two of them. They both like to have more of the goods. Um, so Ayanda likes to have more and Biko likes to have more. And so they have a conflict of interest as to which of them gets more within the box. Um, however, we can see that there are certain directions which are actually better for both of them. So um, we mean this because both people have diminishing marginal utility. So as much as um, it's the case that having um, more of both goods is, is better, um, both of them are going to be willing to make trade-offs between the two goods in order to basically um, get um, more of one good rather than the other. So they're going to be able to engage in exchange in order for them both to do better. And that's what these arrows here um, in the corners are suggesting, is that there are opportunities for them both to do better by exchanging goods with each other. So that's what we see with those arrows. Um, and I suggest that if you're a little um, I'm not sure, uh, unsure about what's going on there, just think about what, what would happen if um, we were at the previous point, point Z over here, and um, Ayanda could potentially get one more unit of Y by giving up um, a unit of X. Would she be willing to do that? What do you think? Why would she want to do that? Have a think about that for yourself for a moment. Okay. Now, to make progress with this question about what they're willing to do, we need to think about their preferences. So let's think about um, Ayanda's utility function and Biko's utility function. So each of their utility functions are a function of their own consumption of X and Y. Okay, now we're also going to say that they are Cobb-Douglas utility functions like we've looked at previously. We take them and we raise them to some power alpha and one minus alpha, alpha and one minus alpha. Now, um, when we think about this, alpha A for Ayanda is not necessarily equal to alpha B, but we are going to look at circumstances in which that is the case. So, two different scenarios. Firstly, they have identical preferences. Alpha A equals alpha B. They both um, like the goods equally. Um, and then other situations, we're going to look at one where alpha A is equal to two-thirds and alpha B is equal to one-third. Um, we're also going to tease out what that might mean in terms of their different preferences a little bit later. So we're going to look at identical preferences and different preferences. So let's think about the first case. So we're here thinking about the preferences they might have. And we've got three indifference curves for Ayanda. Ayanda has an indifference curve U1A, U2A, and U3A. U2A is going through point Z. Remember we said that that allocation that we looked at previously, point Z, we have an indifference curve for Ayanda through that point. And this indifference curve is um, indicating for her the amount of utility that she gets when she has nine units of X and one unit of Y. Now, what we're going to think about that is remember along her indifference curve, so as we move along her indifference curve, what do we know? We can think about her marginal rate of substitution. That's going to become important at a later point in this chapter. But remind yourself, if you're not sure what the marginal rate of substitution is, go back and check what it is from chapter three. The definition of it is that it's the negative slope of the indifference curve, and it's also the ratio of the marginal utilities of the two goods, the marginal utility of X divided by the marginal utility of Y. Okay, so here we have um, Ayanda's indifference curves for um, getting some more of good X or some more of good Y. Similarly, we have indifference curves for Biko. Um, we have Biko's indifference curves for coffee, um, coffee um, the X good, going here from left to right, but they're also going from top, from bottom to top um, in terms of Y. And so point Z for Biko, he has one unit of X and 14 units of Y. So point Z on his indifference curve U2B, um, that is where he has one unit of X and 14 units of Y. Now, here's the thing. When we thought about Biko's um, axes in the Edgeworth box, what did we see? They were flipped, okay? So the huge thing here is that what we're basically going to do is we're going to think about um, this axis here along the X going from um, left to right becomes this axis over here going from right to left. Similarly, what we think about with his gigabytes of data, what we have going from bottom to top here becomes the axis over here going from top 
to bottom in terms of him having more goods. And what we can also see there, um, although my head is hiding it, over here we now have point Z. Point Z is where he has 14 units of Y and one unit of X. Okay, so now we're going to be able to see what happens when we're putting together an Edgeworth box. We want to have Ionda's indifference curves and Biko's indifference curves in the same figure. And that's exactly what we have over here. This is an Edgeworth box where we have combined the indifference curves for Ionda and the indifference curves of Biko. Remember that we said for Biko, going from northeast to southwest indicates to him, to, for him the things that he prefers. Why? That's where he gets more. For Ayanda, it's the opposite. It's going from southwest up to northeast. She gets more as they move in that direction. But we also said that there's a possibility for them both to do better, which is to move from, for example, from somewhere in point Z up towards the center of the box. And that is an opportunity, as we'll explore later, where they can engage in exchange with each other. For example, Ayanda giving up some of her X in order to get some Y from Biko. And Biko giving up some of his Y in order to get some X from Ayanda.